Africa's energy problems are not seemingly easing up, I'm afraid. The national grid is almost always under pressure, which recently resulted in load shedding countrywide. Now, the University of the Western Cape's Hydrogen Systems Center believes they have a solution. It's developing, uh, they tell us, a sustainable energy uh, by u means of hydrogen fuel cell technology. It's a pleasure to welcome to the show uh, via Skype, Dr. Siva Kumar Patsupati from the University of the Western Cape. Uh, doctor, good evening to you. Uh, thank you for your time. How exactly... Uh, is this going to help with load shedding around South Africa? Good evening. No, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, load shedding is the new thing. You know, it happened in the past few years. But we started working in this area since 2008. We were starting to prepare for the situation, and we started working on hydrogen and fuel cell technology. This particular technology is, is, is similar to a battery, but uh, this produces electricity when the fuel is supplied to a cell. And uh, this can produce as long as there is fuel, and it can be installed anywhere in the country, so in, anywhere in the world, uh, for that matter. So, uh, you know, it can be from milliwatts, you know, from small devices like cell phones and uh, laptops, up to large buildings, cars, and all those applications. So we have progressed quite far in this technology, and we have installed a few uh, units around South Africa. Mm. And give me, give me some of the successes with this. What kind of energy output are you talking about? For someone who doesn't understand engineering all that well, are we talking about being able to power a small household, a small suburb, maybe a shopping center? Definitely. You know, for a single household, we call it as a combined heat and power system. It's a system which generates both electricity and power and uh, heat. For heat, for the heating needs, for the boiler and, you know, hot water needs of the family, and uh, electricity for all the family needs. And you typically need about one kilowatt of electrical power you know, on average and about two kilowatt of thermal power. This unit can supply that uh, needs. And for uh, say your malls and you know large buildings, you would install a larger system of hundreds, hundreds of kilowatts, and that can be sufficient to provide all the electricity needs of this building. Uh, how big are these things, uh, Doctor? Give me give me a sense. If I was to uh, come down to with to the Western Cape and come and see you, and I wanted one of these systems, uh, am I am I needing to bring a, a double cab bucky, or can it fit on a in a backpack, or how big are these units? You know, for a residential household, it's size of a bar fridge. You know, you can imagine, you know, you can put anywhere on your bucky or wherever you want to. So it's uh, similar in size of a bar fridge for a single household family. But for multi families and, you know, in, in apartments and uh, for shopping complexes and so on, obviously it is much bigger in size. And also for, you know, in utility scale, uh, in megawatt scale, it is relatively larger. Uh, and when it comes to the, uh, not the amount of power it puts out, you've explained that to me, Doctor, the, uh, the, the reserves of these systems. How long could it keep a small household? That's the analogy. Let's stick to a small household. How long could it keep a house on during load shedding? Is it an hour, two hours, six hours? That's the beauty of this system. You know, it can keep the power for as long as there is fuel, as long as you supply it with natural gas, you know, methane. Uh, it will provide electricity continuously. It's not like a battery. It doesn't drain out. Mm. It produces electricity as long as there is fuel in it. Uh, and perhaps here's the final question, perhaps the most important question. How much are one of these going to set me back uh, this Christmas if I wanted to buy one? Sounds like a good idea, but I'm sure it's very expensive. It's extremely expensive now. You know, unless there are subsidies from the government, it's uh, it's not you know worthy to buy this unit now because it's we are doing once of demonstration units and uh, until you do mass production, the cost will not come down. And we are looking at commercialization uh, by 2023. So you know where mass production of the units and commercialization takes place. But currently, it's it's pretty expensive. You know, just to give an idea, it costs about a million. Hmm. Well, then let's uh, let's now talk about. Uh, you mentioned government subsidies and government involvement, uh, Doctor. What's your timeline for this? I imagine that government is going to want to be part of this as part of their alternative energy solutions. When do you think you might start seeing this being rolled out? Yeah, all the departments are interested. You know, our main funder is Department of Science and Technology uh, under the Hydrogen South Africa program. And apart from this, DTI, IDC, and uh, D, uh, you know, Mineral Beneficiation, all the uh, departments are involved in this. And we are looking at around 2020 to have a few units, you know, with government subsidies to be installed around South Africa. And in 2023 to have, you know, pilot scale demonstration and uh, installation. Well, I wish you the very best of luck. I'm sure many South Africans uh, would appreciate any extra electricity they can find. 
Doctor, thank you very much uh, indeed for joining us uh, this evening via Skype. That was Dr. Uh, Sivakumar Pasupati from the University of the Western Cape uh, talking to us about uh, the Western Cape's Hydrogen Systems Centre. Very 